so it's uh, there's like what 60 candidates for advanced New Zealand or something like that three weeks 15 shows that's actually not enough is it uh, so I'm probably going to have to uh, increase my workload by a significant amount um, but because my workload's all, already basically at, at, at sort of a stable point like for example when I went to the uh, the freedom rally and uh, filmed all of that and and uh, was doing uh, the uh, the protests and went around with the loudspeaker and all of that kind of stuff that was a three-hour job on the day and then afterwards there was all bunches of editing and things like that but at the same time I had to do shows but I found that I couldn't actually do both I had to do one or the other right so I'm either sitting there and editing videos and, and shooting stuff or I'm actually doing uh, live radio live radio is so much easier uh, than editing and far less time consuming uh, but it's no less exhausting uh, to a large degree when I'm under my uh, oppressive lights and stuff like that it's uh, it can be really difficult so I don't know what's going to happen but uh, I never do and good stuff happens anyway all right so this is what I've uh, found out about the uh, the universe or, or at least how it uh, relates to me is I'll come up with a problem or something will be affecting me and I will wonder is there going to be a solution to this is there going to be any way out of this how in the heck am I going to do this and then right when I need it and the exact amount that I require the exact same thing that I needed comes into my life okay so if you've got problems or if you've got uh, uh, difficulties or, or something like that just put your intention out there and the universe will respond always tends to do that for me I mean uh, I remember one time I uh, got out of bed and I think it was like 10 a.m. or something and my show was on at 10.05 <laughs> had no coffee did no no food no nothing so just roll out of bed basically and onto the show and uh by the end of two hours and stuff like that, I was freaking starving, you know? I, don't know. And I was like, man, I really need a pie. And all of a sudden, was, what? Oh, it was my mate Dan at the door. He goes, hey, bro, I got you a Mac and two pie. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, it's that whole the power of in intention and the secret, I suppose. And and that whole, like, lining your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions, right? And that's, that's how I see, like, what you are talking about earlier about this, like, Satanism versus god or the good versus the evil or you know wherever you choose to put your intentions and then when you use your the power of your mind and your thoughts and yeah your feelings and then you can bring it all into the real world through your actions that's kind of how how we all operate and it's whether you do it intentionally or not right so are you going to go for something higher and try and do what the higher power or God or however you look at it wants you to do or are you going to do what your little kind of ego wants you to do so that you can amass the whole material wealth and the money and that or are you going to aspire to something greater where you can contribute to humanity and do you know the service to others rather than the service to self and I think that's a big part of what you've done with your life and what you've just told us about is that you've spent a lot of your time um, on service to others so that you can help others go through maybe less suffering than you did yeah, well hopefully I mean, uh, this election is not about right or left. It's about good and evil. Now, some people will sit on the side of good. Some people will support evil. And others will just sit on the fence saying, just waiting to see who will come out on top. I'm just trying to burn the fence down. <laughs> yeah. Make people choose. Yeah, and it's that polarity, and I think that's what we are seeing. It's like those people that are awakening, and you see that with the the advanced New Zealand um, kind of members, they're really strong about what they think and they're, they're, a lot of them are just really awake and they're just so inspired and they're so, like, giving it everything. And then you've got the kind of the opposite end of the spectrum of, well, people that don't necessarily even vote. They're not even necessarily engaged in politics or they're staunch kind of Labour voters or staunch national voters that they haven't really thought outside the box. And so you'll see it in families too, won't you now, the split of kind of the people that are, trying to choose the side of good and trying to bring about the awakening and then you've got the other ones that they're not necessarily evil by intention or by on purpose like but the it's the term de facto satanist yeah and they don't really know what a it satanist is satanist and all but intention yeah so i mean and that's that's what they if you look at it from a bigger point of view that's what um 
so yeah, it's a byproduct of all these policies, isn't it? And the way that the, that the whole uh, social engineering and everything that they're bringing in is kind of creating that, like you said earlier, the narcissistic kind of self. And you see that, you know, with the whole selfie kind of lifestyle, and everyone's trying to. Mm. It's all about themselves now, and they don't really think about the bigger picture. Yeah, yeah, so what I've done in order to counteract that is I just make sure that I've got somebody next to me when I'm doing the selfie. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's yeah. always somebody on the show or something like that. So as far as I'm concerned, it's just an hour long selfie that somebody else gets to be that, that somebody else gets to photo bomb, and that's my service to humanity. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, I mean, just quickly, I guess, going back to this historical election, I mean, it, like, have you got any predictions or do you see how it's going to go or what, what are your thoughts? You've been in the game long enough. Oh, I've been in the game long enough to know that predictions are freaking bad ideas, man. I mean, uh, we have a look at the polling and stuff and it's saying that Labour might be able to govern alone and I've seen uh, stuff like that before that didn't pan out. So it's anybody's guess and I am hopeful that Advance New Zealand is going to get in because once they do, it doesn't matter whether you're Advance New Zealand or something like that. If you want to call yourself New Zealand Public Party once you're in Parliament, you can. Did you know that? That if you get into Parliament and you're under the Advanced New Zealand banner, but you're actually from the New Zealand People's Party or the New Zealand Public Party or, or something like that, when you get your seat, it's a seat for the New Zealand Public Party. Right. No, I didn't realise that. I thought I thought only Billy's seat was under New Zealand Public Party. He's the only one you can vote for in the electorate of Titai Tokoro yeah. as an independent candidate for the New Zealand Public Party. Yeah, yeah. But... Once it's all over, once we're in Parliament and stuff like that, we can be New Zealand Public right. Party again. Yeah, okay. Right? So that was the uh, the whole thing that people have been uh, doubting Billy, have been doubting the party since the beginning. In fact, if there's a, a prediction anything, it's that the more doubt that is put, put upon Billy and the advanced New Zealand Party, the more that the they're going to achieve. When people say, oh, you'll never become a political party, boom, they, they merge with one. And uh, when people say, oh, you're never going to get polling, boom, they show up in the polls. When people say, oh, you'll never be preferred prime minister, boom, they show up in the polls, you know, stuff like that. So essentially it is anybody's game at this point would be the old-fashioned saying, but it's not. There is one game, there is one shot, and it is Advance New Zealand, New Zealand Public Party. We have one shot, and one shot is all we need. Yeah, and so, um, I mean, how do you see it going forward? Like, let's say they got into Parliament, um, you know, would they, how would they, how would they do it? You know, would they go with... Well, my, left, my question right. is, what are the uh, what are the other things that are going to happen? Because they seem to have the policies, they seem to have the uh, the legislation, and all of that kind of stuff. Like precisely as I would do it, they've already done it without even Mike consulting me about it. And I'm like, <laughs> amazing. Um, but the the thing about it is, once they get in there, there is going to be an awful lot of impediments that is going to be put in their way. So uh, as I tell people, you know, you're not going to uh, sit back, cast your vote for Billy and have him go into Parliament and save your ass. You're going to have to continue to keep fighting long after the election is over to try and save this country. It needs each and every one of us. And especially at that local body council level, because that's where, you know, the UN agendas 21 and 30 Robin are getting roll right. out. Yeah. So that's where... You know, we're going to have to go to the, the urban planning meetings and the really boring, unsexy kind of activism that, you know, no one wants to do that. I mean, you look at Penny Bright, like she dedicated her life to it, but have we got a new Penny Bright? I don't know, not well, that yeah, I know I of. I think Sue Gray came out of the woodwork after Penny oh, yeah, Bright well, passed Oh yeah, well yeah, Sue Gray's doing well. So yeah. that's, that's the thing about hope, is humanity is like a water spring. Not a mechanical spring where you put it down and you just try and hold it down and it's much harder to hold it down because you've got it all the way down. No, no, it's like a water spring. When you push the water down, it starts burrowing sideways. It starts looking for all the weaknesses and the cracks and then starts bursting through forth to the surface in ways that were completely unpredictable. That's humanity. It doesn't matter how you try to hold us down. We are going to find the weaknesses. We are going to find ways around, and we are going to burst through. And 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 how I do want to bring up just um, you know the global um, geopolitics as well. How do you see that going? You know because it's almost like we've got the CCP obviously you know trying to reach its tentacle. Well, 
having its tentacles already in this country. But then you've got Trump doing what he's doing over in, in America, and then you've got Brexit. So, I mean, how do you see things going? Are we gonna are we gonna separate from the Five Eyes and go with China, or or are we gonna strengthen our relationship with with America and with the UK? I think there's going to be one global revolution. It's going to be like rolling, you know, from one country to the next. I was hoping it might happen here first, and that'll inspire others uh, to follow our example. And then one country after the next will have their own independent, freedom-based uh, movements pop up within them that are completely unpredictable, just like Billy was, come out of nowhere, and then just take the cake and take the countries back. Because one thing I do question is, is the um, direct democracy and the referendum, uh, you know, the people's referendum, because that to me is coming from a socialist communist point of view and if you look at the Scandinavian countries they're very much heavily kind of down that that track and I see it in New Zealand if we if we were to to roll that out you know you've got big urban areas and you've got the people getting pushed into the cities would they not because the culture is so different you know in New Zealand like the Auckland culture versus you know rural New Zealand how would how would that divide kind of split I'm not sure what you're asking. Well, it's not necessarily the best in, way in to govern. Of, well, like in, in terms, terms of, of citizens initiated referendum, yeah, it's because, not the best way yeah, to govern. Because, because you're going to have the city folk, you know, if you've got a million people in, in Auckland, they're going to kind of, and, 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 and Wellington, like those population bases would, would, would quite easily well, I'm overrule. Sure, I'm not sure entirely if that's how it works, because if you look at the, uh, the concept of the, called the wisdom of the crowd, uh, and they've done this a, a lot of times, so like for example with uh, open source technology, the crowd will pick, for example, the players in a soccer game, and that soccer team that they built, the, the people together with, the, with their own decisions, actually winds up winning the match. A crowd will be asked how many jelly beans in the jar, and they average it out to about this number in the middle where everybody's uh, predictions really pan out and it turns out to be almost exactly the same amount of uh, numbers in the jelly beans. When you put the heads of people together and it's all equal, free speech and stuff like that, people make good decisions overwhelmingly. So that would have to be, you know, you'd have to make that like lower level though, right? You'd have to get it back down to a small community based decision making? I, I think that uh, essentially what my vision for the future is is that there wouldn't be any government, there wouldn't be any police, there wouldn't be any taxes, there wouldn't be any orthodox religions and, and, and things of these natures of a much larger multinational scope. They wouldn't exist, uh, but there would be uh, cooperatives of a nature that would perform much less the same function, but there wouldn't be any centralised power base. It would all be completely decentralised people cooperating with each other as opposed to completely powerful centralised power telling everybody what to do. And would it be like no anarcho-capitalism? Or... Oh, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but anarchanism is the uh, being against archons. Archons are controllers, slave masters, people who believe that you have to do what I tell you because I tell you that kind of thing. And I believe that if you could manufacture a culture that telling people what to do and expecting them to do what you tell them just because you tell them is a bad thing, the amount of human progress that could come out of that situation is unpredictable. Because when the West uh, first, you know, came up with the ideas of uh, civil liberties and, and pro private property rights and uh, free speech and freedom of the press and stuff like this. this. These were new concepts at the time. And then for a period of 200 years, 96% of the inventions, you know, scientific inventions of mankind, 97% of them came out of the West. Because, unlike under COVID, you had freedom of association you had freedom of speech. You could, one guy who's got a crazy idea could go talk to another guy who's got a crazier idea. They could put their ideas together and come up with something even crazier, bro. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's that's the danger of allowing people free association and free speech and free access to information and that's why so much discoveries uh, happened during that time frame now today on the other hand I think a lot of the things are, are starting to slide back and down again as we become a lot more intellectually backwards we're becoming a lot more superstitious and we're starting to believe in gods again right and I and I mean real manifest gods like for example a computer god or a government god the government is god they gave me my rights my my god given rights from the government you know <laughs> you know that's the kind of thing and if you respect people's uh, rights in terms of a, uh, a legal entity like let's say for example god was a legal entity and i've got god given rights what legal entity of man has the power to take away rights that were given to me by the legal entity known as God. Hmm. A very, very good reason uh, uh, to have the words God in, for example, the Constitution of the United States. God-given rights, because the government can't take them away. Yeah, and that's the whole crux of the issue, isn't it, that we're seeing? Um, just that separation of kind of, yeah, your God-given rights versus government-given rights. And I hope that that whole sovereignty and the, the questioning of jurisdiction and admiralty law versus kind of common law really does um, come to the fore now. It seems like it's kind of really snowballing, um, especially in the last 10 years. I don't know, I've seen a lot of people start questioning that. And that's a whole other issue that, you know, we could spend another whole day talking about, couldn't we? Because it's so complex and it's so detailed. But, but bringing common law back to the people, that seems to be from a legal standpoint or a lawful standpoint, that seems to be a, a potential avenue. Or it's one, one way that lots of people are working at, at coming from, even, oh, on sure, a, even sure. from I a global understand. level. Um, and there's, uh, there's two aspects to that. Number one is, is the legal fiction truly fiction? And the answer is yes, it absolutely is. Is there potentially legal remedy to that fiction that can actually set us free? Yes, there is. Do psychopaths follow their own rules, though? No, they fucking don't. So it doesn't matter if you've got the documents. It doesn't matter if you've got the truth. As long as you're still unable to stab in the throat and bleed out like a stuck pig, the people who are taking your rights and don't care about them and whatsoever, you don't have no rights. Your rights start and end at the barrel of the gun. The communists were right, and that's why the communists took all your guns. And that's why Jacinda took ours. And that's why if we uh, don't get... Uh, control back over the government quick fast in a hurry before the ability to defend ourselves physically is completely taken away entirely we are going to be slaves or worse well I'm going to try and uh, encourage you to give us the best Vinny Eastwood advice because I'd like to leave the viewers with a positive note because it is as you say um, what's your what's your line um we're getting exterminated, so we might as well make it fun. Welcome, ladies oh, and go. gentlemen, <laughs> to the Vinny Eastwood Show. The lighter side of genocide. Just because we're being exterminated doesn't mean we can't make it fun. Otherwise, what's the point of being killed? The Vinny Eastwood Show. Where the only thing worse than living in a high-tech global police state is Vinny's jokes. <laughs> Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Vinny Eastwood, and um, you can tune in to his show, as he said, five days a week. If you're looking for um, a place of comfort, a place of knowledge, a place of inspiration, or um, just a place of, you know, distraction from your daily life, well, he's got lots jokes, on. Like a 007 boat builders, uh, license to keel. <laughs> There you go, yes, and he's got a daughter and she's going to have to put up with that for her whole life. So, good, great, lots of, he's working on his dad jokes. Awesome. So, well, thank you so much, Vinny. It's been great um, having much. a chat to you and um, I wish you all the best with the election and um, your work coming up in these next three weeks. It's going to be busy, busy time, no doubt, for you. Mm. And um, hopefully we can do this again sometime. Indeed. Cool. Thanks very much. Cheers.